listening to Big World Network. Just Kill Me, Season 2, Episode 2, Fear. Written by Wendy Herman. Read by Wendy Herman. Am I dead? I had a serious headache, so I assumed not. I opened my eyes, but there was still darkness. I tried again, and again. I blinked my eyes so many times I couldn't tell when they were open and when they were closed anymore. I gave up and relaxed my eye muscles, assuming they were closed. As the realization of my situation swirled around in my head, my heart raced, and I felt like it would leap right out of my chest. I started to sweat, and suddenly I couldn't breathe. So this is what fear feels like. Real fear and uncertainty of whether or not I would survive the day, the hour. It was new to me. I had felt fear when Rowan was choking on that damn quarter, but not like this. I had to get a hold of myself. Rip would find me. Of that I was absolutely sure. Eventually. I forced the thoughts of my precious little boys to the back of my mind, and concentrated on steadying my heart rate. A minute later the sweating had stopped, and I was taking deep, cleansing breaths. Better. Remember your training, Freya. First, assess my surroundings. Where the hell was I? I felt around with my hands. The floor was cold tile. Cold, wet, sticky tile. I tried to wipe my hands on my pants, but the sticky wouldn't come off. Gross. I had no idea where I was being imprisoned, but I could definitely cross off a suite at the Hilton from my list of possibilities. Seriously, though, why couldn't it ever be a suite at the Hilton? Criminals were such barbarians. I was kneeling. I stuck my arms out and felt around for a wall, but only found emptiness. I slowly tried to stand, and that's when I realized my right foot was chained. Shit. There was that instant head-to-toe sweating again. My breath quickened. No, you can do this. I followed the thick links to the wall behind me, and found the metal ring the chain was attached to. It was mounted securely into the cement wall. I couldn't budge it. I reluctantly felt around the wall, terrified of what I might touch, but nothing. I slowly stood, careful to keep the chain from wrapping around my leg, and took a tentative step forward. After four steps, I was pushing the limits of the chain and had to stop. I reached out and walked in a semicircle as far away from the wall as the chain would let me, and my hand hit something. It was solid, smooth plastic, and... As I ran my hand along it, it seemed to span the whole length of the room, although the chain stopped me from confirming that. The only thing I could compare it to was a car windshield, but it was much longer. Just then I heard someone coming. Make that two someones. A muffled conversation was coming from the other side of the wall, but I wasn't sure exactly from where until a door opened just across from where I was chained. The light coming in was so bright I slammed my eyes shut and knelt back down on the floor in an attempt to escape it. My head pounded. Shit, she's awake, I heard a voice say nervously. I ain't going in there. I opened my eyes slowly, spot still swimming in front of my eyes, and saw that my blouse was stained with blood. What did they do to me? I hadn't felt any pain, except for my incredibly sore tailbone, and I knew what that was from. Rip's eyes flashed in my mind, but I pushed them away. Thinking about him and what had happened, well, it wasn't going to help me get out of there. So I focused on searching for any wounds on my body, ignoring my guests for the moment. They were hesitating in the doorway anyway, arguing about who should go in first. Nothing. I barely had a scratch on me. My hands had dried blood on them, but not from me. I suddenly realized what I had stuck them in on the floor earlier. But it wasn't my blood, and if it wasn't mine, then... Wait, my headache. I slowly reached up, trying not to get the blood from my hand in my hair, but found nothing. The pain in my head was all internal, apparently. I shuddered at the possibilities running through my brain. 
The blood had still been wet when I'd accidentally discovered it. Had they been keeping someone else in here just before me? Someone else who had lost a lot of blood? Enough to... I closed my eyes and struggled to control my breathing. I knew I had to focus and think of a way out. I would not become the damsel in distress. I was not a weak woman who needed a man to rescue her. I was goddess Freya, and I would wield my power, whatever that was. I didn't know how much time I had before my captors decided I was no longer needed. Why I was still alive was a mystery, a mystery I would have to solve later. I needed to get rid of the chain binding me to the wall. I wondered if one of my reluctant visitors had a key. Why the hell were they still hovering in the doorway? It was almost as if they were... afraid. Afraid of what? Me? I had to test that theory, ridiculous as it seemed. What are you afraid of, boys? I interrupted their argument. Come on in, I won't hurt you. My throat was so dry my words came out rough, like I'd been at a Styx concert the night before. If only. The possibility of dehydration was no longer a joke. They both went silent and froze, staring at me. My eyes were adjusting to the light, and I was able to focus on the two men. Or should I say, boys? They couldn't have been more than twenty, either of them. And they were dressed like white wannabe gangsters. With the chains around their necks and stupid hats on sideways, I prayed my boys would never succumb to that pathetic fad. I noticed one of the young men, the meteor of the two, and rather muscular from the bumps and contours I could make out under his dirty T-shirt, had a pretty serious black eye, and under a large rip in the thigh of his overly baggy jeans was a bloody bandage in dire need of changing. The wound was still actively bleeding. For a split second, I forgot myself, and my maternal instinct took over my brain. You should really have that leg looked at. The look of fear on their faces increased tenfold at my statement. Not the response I was expecting at all. I put the mom part of my brain in a timeout and regained my composure. What exactly are these two so afraid of? Since they weren't making any movements to enter the room, I decided to stand. What difference did it make? If I was going to die here, I was pretty sure standing up wasn't going to change that. I raised up my torso and put one foot on the ground. My tailbone twinged at the motion and I stopped. Looking up at my two new friends, I noticed they had backed away from the door now, regarding me as if I was Calypso turning into a thousand sand crabs right in front of their eyes. It didn't seem as though they knew my stopping in mid-stand was because I was in pain. Okay, assuming they were afraid of me for whatever reason, they must think I'm doing it for effect to put them on edge even more. And it was working. I completed the maneuver, slowly stretching my spine to my full five feet ten inches. I scanned the room, looking for anything that might help me escape. The windshield I had felt earlier was actually a sneeze guard for an old, now empty, ice cream shop display case. And there were a few bar stools left over from its glory days, but I couldn't reach them with that blasted chain on my ankle. There was nothing else in the room, which I now suspected to be a tiny freestanding building. Maybe we are, were at an abandoned fairgrounds, or drive-in theater. My mind reeled. The muscle boy pushed his companion toward the door. Get in there! The boss wants to know who this bitch is! Check her for ID, he ordered, pushing him farther into the doorway. But the young man resisted, thrusting both arms outward and bracing himself in the door frame. "'So she can mess me up, too? No way, man!' "'What?' "'You have a gun, moron!' the bigger man reminded him. This seemed to convince him it was safe for a second. He reached inside the doorway with one foot, but then retreated again. "'Dude, so did you!' My head pounded again as I tried to follow the scene playing out in front of me. My hand flew involuntarily to my temple. Suddenly I had a flash of something. A memory?' It was Muscle Boy, and he was frisking me for any hint of identification, but he was really enjoying it, really enjoying it. In fact, he was attempting to get to third base when I'd had enough of his tentacles on me. I swung my whole body around so quickly he was caught completely off guard, 
and came around with one elbow right into the side of his head. The black eye. Then I spun back around and slammed my right foot into his left thigh with such force, the heel of my boot ripped his jeans and sliced open his thigh at the same time. The bleeding wound. As the hooligan fell backward in my memory, I heard something small but heavy hit the floor and slide into the darkness of the corner. His gun. Wait. I had injured the young man when he'd had a gun and all those muscles. I had kicked his ass and he'd run bleeding and scared to death of me. Bleeding. The blood on the floor, on my blouse, and now on my hands. It was his. How did I do it? My brain must have accessed the intensive training sessions with Agent Hart, and my instincts had kicked in. But why couldn't I remember anything else? Just then I realized that my last memory, besides the flashback, was of the large man from the bridge putting a blindfold on me in the car. I had just said goodbye to Rip. No, I hadn't said goodbye. I'd said something else. I shook the memory loose, determined not to get distracted. It was probably just the adrenaline and stress of the situation, my memory loss. I'd read that was common, I think. Or maybe they had drugged me. That would explain why I'd been asleep, or unconscious, and the headache. Now I was pissed. I prided myself on my healthy lifestyle, and I never, ever put man-made chemicals into my body if I could help it. How dare they! The pounding subsided and I looked up at the boys with renewed clarity. And a plan. I was no doctor, but I was a mom, and judging by the amount of blood on me and on the floor, and the fact that the kid's thigh was still bleeding heavily, I knew he was going to die without medical attention. And soon. He should be feeling weak by now. And I was positive that his gun was still in the corner. You're listening to Big World Network.